Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com and in this tutorial we're going to look at getting the coordinates that the user has clicked on a view and in particular I'm going to look at how we can find out um, when I say clicked I, I should say touched actually um, but um, in this tutorial in particular we're going to look at how you can find out if the user touches various points on this image on their phone um, how can we find out which points they've touched and the first thing I'm going to do here is, um, this image looks a bit ugly. Uh, by the way, I, I don't have um, copyright rights to this image, so I'm going to change it later on, but this is just um, something to work with for the moment. And um, to make this look a bit nicer, uh, well, later on, one thing I'm going to do is save different versions of this image under different sizes in these different folders here, which um, makes it more likely to look good on different devices um, but um, what I'm going to do for a moment is just change the way this image scales because at the moment it's scaling so that it fits um, horizontally but we've got gaps vertically um, so in the layout activity underscore image for this um, particular view this particular activity sorry um, I'm going to add, add an attribute here um, scale type and I'm going to set that equal to fit XY and now if I run this it's going to scale the image irrespective of aspect ratio so that it fits um, it takes up the entire image view here which is what I want now uh, let's look at how to find out uh, where the user touches on this image and to do that I'm going to go to my imageactivity.java and I'm going to add a new method here Let's call it private void add touch listener. And I'm going to call this method after I do set content view, which is very important because if you add a touch listener before doing set content view in onCreate, then you'll get an error. So in onCreate, call set content view and then um, add the code that I'm about to add in a minute which will, which adds your touch listener let's just take a look at this so that looks much better now it's scaled um, to fit horizontally and vertically and in add touch listener the first thing I need is I want to get a handle to my image view and if I look at the uh, layout for this activity I gave this image the ID touch underscore image so we will use that and I'll use find view by ID again and r.id dot and touch underscore image and that will give me uh, my view and it's uh, it's an image view I know so I'll declare a variable of the type image view I'll call it image and I'll set that equal to, to the return value of find view by ID which I need to cast to an image view like this so I'm just I'm just running this code um, from here, and let's add let's do Control Shift O to add the import there, and now I want to add a touch listener to this image view, so I'm going to say image dot set on touch listener, and here I'll say new space and I'll do con Control Space for the autocomplete and hit return, and it's added this whole anonymous class here of the type view dot on touch listener and I need to add the import there with control shift O and then if we hover over it uh, we can see the documentation here and it's the view dot on touch listener class let's put the semicolon in and now um, the last thing I'm going to do in this particular tutorial is just to get the coordinates here and display them so um, the coordinates that the user touches on the mobile screen on the image so to do that I can use this event object which is passed to the onTouch method of this anonymous class here and I can say float x equals event dot get x and float y equals event dot get y and let's just output that um, so to, to have a string that we can read um, let's say a string message equals um, 
and I could use string dot value of to get the to get turn these floats into um, values, or I could do something like um, turn these floats into string. Sorry, or I could use the float class with a capital F and do to string. Or another way to do it is I could use string dot format, and I could pass in a format string here. Let's say coordinates. And let's pass in here in brackets percent f percent f, and I'll have let's say percent point two f to get the coordinates to two decimal places. And finally, um, now I need to use the log dot d method to um, just so I can see these coordinates. And I'll I'll create a tag up here for debugging. I'll say private static final string debug tag equals and I'll set that equal to my initials which is what I did before or in fact I think I already have one of these in the main activity so if I have main activity here and I think it's public then I can use the debug tag from that which actually probably makes more sense so let's do that and I'll output my message here showing the coordinates and now I'll just run, save and run this application. And let's look at what's happening in the console. So it's uploading. And um, in a minute I'm going to go to DDMS. Let's just wait for a moment and check that it runs, that it installs and uploads OK. So once we see the success message, which is coming just about now, Okay, not now, um, but in a second. There we go, success, finally. I'll click DDMS and I'll use that filter that I, I set up um, in an earlier, in a tutorial on DDMS, my debug filter. And if I go to my um, application now and click various points on the image, whoops, I got an error for some reason. And uh, let's just take a look at what's happening here. So in fact, my format specifier is wrong. Um, if I look up here, um, somewhere in here, I've lost it now. Yeah, there we go. Format specifier 0.2f, missing format argument exception. In fact, what I forgot was, I think, very, very stupid. I forgot to... Um, Actually, actually put the coordinates in here. So uh, if you are silently screaming at me from behind your monitor to put the coordinates in, then I do apologise. And if you were just confused, then I also apologise. Let's take another look. Let's just run this again. And I think this will hopefully work. So we're installing it. And let's go to DDMS and let's look at the emulator. And in just a second, my image will hopefully appear. There we go. So now if I click various points on this, let's select my debug output again and um, click different points here. And there we go. And if we look at this debug output, we can see the coordinates that are being clicked, X and Y. Okay, so that's it for this tutorial. Um, and actually, um, during while I've been creating this application, often I'll find some error. Um, I, I've done something wrong, usually. And um, usually I just re-record the tutorial, uh, but I think I'm not going to this time just because I wanted to show you that um, if and when you get errors, which you certainly will, especially that application has stopped type message, um, it's always worth just looking in the console or looking in the DDMS monitor here and scrolling right up to the top to the first bit of red that you see. Um, you might have to go a long way and then patiently scrolling down and most of the time you'll eventually find a meaningful error message that tells you what you're doing wrong. And if you don't, then try stuff like cleaning the project, restarting your emulator, restarting Eclipse. And once, I swear I even had to restart my whole computer to get the whole thing to work properly. But usually it's going to be something you've done and usually there will be an error message and you should start looking at the error messages from the top downwards. Okay, so that's it for this tutorial, and until next time, happy coding.